Well, students, we have finished the interpolation chapter. Now we are into numerical integration. Given that we have understood the polynomial interpolation of a given function, it is not very difficult to understand how to derive formulas for numerical integration. Let me first give a overall idea of how to derive different methods for numerical integration. Our aim is to find the value of this term that is integral a to b f of x dx for a given function f defined on the interval a b. Generally, we use the notation i of f to denote the exact value of this integral. The process of approximating the value of the integral i of f is usually referred to as numerical integration or quadrature formula. The idea behind deriving a quadrature formula is very, very simple. You look for a function which approximates the function f, but rather this simple function is something which is easy to integrate. That is the overall idea. As we know, there are many functions that are known to be integrable but still we have no standard methods to evaluate their integrals. If we want to evaluate such integrals, we have no choice other than going for some approximation method. In such cases, instead of looking for the value of this term, you approximate it by some simpler function. One immediate choice is to go for a polynomial because polynomials, we know that they are the most easiest functions that can be integrated. Then replace that function, say p of x, for which we can easily find the integral. And in some sense, this p of x approximate this function f in the interval a, b. That is the aim. Once you find that simpler function, you simply Consider integrating that and get the value of that integral and consider it to be an approximation to i of f. That is the overall idea. Now, what is that simpler function? As I have already hinted you, you can always go for the polynomial interpolation. That is, you take, say, pn of x constructed from the function f at some n plus one nodes in the interval a, b. And instead of obtaining a to b f of x dx, you obtain a to b p n of x dx and consider this to be an approximation to this value, right? So you give me n plus one nodes and the function f, we know how to construct p n of x. And once you have pn of x, you integrate that and get the value and consider that to be the approximation to your integral a to b f of x dx. So that is the overall idea behind deriving quadrature formulas. Now you see, you have two set of parameters. One is just n. And once you fix n, you choose some n plus one nodes. These two together will give you the interpolating polynomial pn of x, right? Different choice of n and different choice of node give different polynomials. And therefore, your quadrature formula will also be different, right? So with this one single idea, you can generate many quadrature formulas. Let us go one step more deeper and see how these quadrature formulas will look like. You want to find the integral a to b f of x dx. You have made the compromise that you will go for integrating the corresponding interpolating polynomial and get the value of it and consider that to be an approximation to your exact value, right? Now, once you decide that you will integrate your polynomial, what you will be doing is you will be finding the integral of this because this is your polynomial interpolating your function f at the node points x i, x0, x1 up to xn. So I'm just writing it in the Lagrangian form if you observe. Now what we are doing, i of this means integral a to b, 
right? Integral a to b, this dx. That's what we are now going to do. Since there are only finite number of terms in this summation, you can take the integral inside without any technical problem. And f of xi is also constant. Therefore, you will finally have integral a to b li of x dx, right? That is i of li, where li's are the Lagrange polynomials. If you recall, these are Lagrange polynomials and you just integrate them. Therefore, now this becomes a constant for each i, right? That I will write as f of x naught w naught, f of x1, w1, and so on, f of x in wn. What are these w's? w's are precisely the value of the integral over a to b, where the integrand is the Lagrange polynomial li. Okay, These are called weights. So finally, your quadrature formula will look like this. Now, you can see that you give me a positive integer n and some nodes in the interval a, b, you can immediately get a quadrature formula based on these parameters. So different set of parameters gives different quadrature formulas. In this way, in fact, you can obtain uncountably many quadrature formulas. But in this chapter, we will mainly introduce three quadrature formulas. One is the rectangle rule. In this case, we will be choosing n is equal to zero. And correspondingly, the node, which is only one node, is chosen as x naught equal to a. Also, you can choose b. Another one is a slight variation of this, which is called midpoint rule. And that is, again, n is equal to 0. And x naught is equal to midpoint of the interval a, b. That is, a plus b by 2. Similarly, we can also introduce uh, the method with n is equal to 1, in which case we need two nodes, x0 and x1. We'll choose x0 as a and x1 as b. And that leads to the method called trapezoidal rule. And finally, we will also introduce a very important method called Simpson's method, where we will take n equal to 2, x naught equal to a, x1 is equal to a plus b by 2, and x2 equal to b. Let us start our discussion on the rectangle rule. This is the general form of the quadrature rule that we are interested in. In that, we will take n is equal to 0, and thereby we have only one term, f of x naught into w naught. What is W naught? W naught is nothing but the integral a to b L naught of x dx. In this, L naught is nothing but 1. Therefore, this is nothing but b minus a. Therefore, you have the integral of p naught is nothing but b minus a into f of x naught. That is also quite easy to see because p naught of x is just simply f of x naught, right? Therefore, when you integrate between a to b, you have simply b minus a into f of x naught, okay? So that's not very difficult to see. You don't need to go for all this. You can directly integrate and see this. Now, you can see that your choice of x naught can be anything in the interval a to b. So in that way, even at the rectangle rule level, we have uncountably many quadrature rules. However, in the name of rectangle rule, we will fix our x naught to be only a. Okay? There's no hard and fast rule. Why should I fix it to be only a? Why not x naught is equal to b? Well, you can choose that also. In fact, you can choose any x naught in the interval a to b. But when we say rectangle rule in our course, we will always understand that we have fixed our x naught to be a. And thereby, the formula is given by b minus a into f of a. Okay. So when we say that we are approximating the integral a to be f of x dx, using rectangle rule, it means we are obtaining the value of this 
formula and just considering that as an approximation to whatever may be the value which will come out from this integral. Geometrically, suppose the graph of the function is shown in this solid line, then what you want as integral a to b f of x dx is, is nothing but the area under the graph and the line bounded by x equal to a and x equal to b, right? So this entire area is what we want to take as the value of this integral. But what we get from this rectangle rule is only what is shown in this rectangle. That is, we only get the area of this rectangle. Now the question is, what is the error that we commit by accepting this as an approximation to this value? The error is precisely this, right? So if you recall, the mathematical error involved in, the, in any method for that matter is the exact value minus the approximate value. In particular, if you are working with rectangle rule, the mathematical error, which is different denoted by M E R of F is nothing but the exact value, which is this minus the approximate value. That is integral A to B F of X DX minus you have B minus A into F of A, right? That is the mathematical error. Well, of course we cannot directly obtain the value of the mathematical error from this expression. Why? Because Strictly speaking, we do not know the value of this term. That is why we went for an approximation. Therefore, it is too much to expect the value of this. If that is so, then we don't need to go for an approximation, right? Therefore, this is not known to us. And therefore, we cannot compute this directly from the basic formula. Rather, we can have an expression for this. Let us see what is the expression for this term. To obtain this expression, we have to assume that f is a C1 function on the interval a, b. Then the mathematical error whose basic definition is this can also be written as f dash of eta into b minus a the whole square by 2, where eta is some unknown number in the interval a to b. Now let us see how to prove this result choose any x in the interval a, b other than the point a and consider the linear interpolating polynomial for the function f at the nodes a and x. So what we get is p1 of t is equal to p0 of t plus f of a comma x into t minus a. So I'm writing the interpolating polynomial in the Newton's form. And this polynomial p1 interpolates the function f at the node points a and x. Therefore, if you put t is equal to x, you will have p1 of x is equal to f of x by the interpolating condition. Right, So that is what we are writing here. f of x is equal to p naught of x plus f of a comma x into x minus a. You should keep this idea in mind. This idea will be followed while deriving the mathematical error for many quadrature formulas that we will be coming across. In general, suppose the quadrature formula is obtained using some integer n and correspondingly the nodes x0, x1 up to xn, then the basic idea behind deriving the mathematical error for the quadrature formula obtained by integrating pn of x dx over the interval a, b is that you take these nodes, add one more node x, where x is some point in the interval a, b, which is not equal to any of these nodes. Now with this, 
nodes and the corresponding values of f, we can construct the polynomial p n plus one of t, right? That will be written as p n of t plus f of x naught to x n, comma, you have added one more node, right? So that will also sit here into phi i is equal to zero to n only t minus x i, right? Now what you do is you put t is equal to x and thereby you have p n plus one of x equal to f of x and that f of x will be equal to p n of x plus this term f of x naught to x n comma x times pi i is equal to zero to n now x minus x i right and recall that the mathematical error is precisely integral a to b f of x dx minus integral a to b p n of x dx right and this is how we have defined the mathematical error involved in the quadrature formula obtained using these nodes x not x uh, one up to x n for a given n right and that can be actually given by you can see that taking integral on both sides that will be a to b divided difference now it's a function of x so this divided difference is not a fixed number it's a function of x that varies from a to b right so you are integrating between a to b therefore as far as the integrand is concerned this x is now a variable Whereas while constructing this polynomial interpolation, you have fixed this x arbitrarily. And at that stage, since you want to compute this also, you assume that x is not equal to any of these nodes. But when you come to this level of applying the same formula under the integral sign, now x has to run from a to b. In particular, it will also touch upon x0, x1 up to xn, right? But that doesn't matter because we know how to interpret this divided difference when two or more nodes are repeated, right? With the help of that formula, that is hermit ginocchi formula, now we can give a meaning for this integrand along with that and try to see how we can rewrite this term in order to get some nice form for our mathematical error that can be estimated with extra information, right? So that's the main idea behind deriving the mathematical error formula for any quadrature rule that we devise using an integer n and corresponding n plus one nodes given to us. In particular, in the rectangle rule, we are given n is equal to zero, and x naught is equal to a. Therefore, what we are doing is we are constructing the polynomial P1 by taking nodes as a and some x which is not equal to a. And thereby we get this. And once you have this, you put p equal to x and use the interpolating condition and get this identity. So we have f of x equal to p naught of x plus f of a x, that is the divided difference times x minus a. Now, what is the mathematical error? Mathematical error is nothing but integral a to b f of x dx, which is nothing but the left hand side with integral, right? Minus integral a to b p naught of x dx. That is nothing but the first term on the right hand side with integral, right? That is precisely our mathematical error involved in the rectangle rule of the function f, right? So now that can be written as you just take integral a to b f of a comma x x minus a dx. 
So that is what I am writing here. Now we will see how to rewrite this integrand. For that, we will use the mean value theorem for integration. If you recall, the mean value theorem for integration says that suppose you have two functions, say f of x into g of x, with the condition that one of these functions does not change the sign. For instance, if g does not change the sign, then you can pull out f with unknown factor eta. And then you can write this integral as f of eta times integral a to b g of x dx, right? So that is the mean value theorem for integration. I think it's the second mean value theorem for integration. You can see that x minus a does not change sign, right? x is always greater than or equal to a. Therefore, you have this term to be positive. Therefore, you can keep that inside the integral, pull the other one out with a unknown factor xi, and hence you can write this integral as this, where xi lies between a and b. Now you use the mean value theorem for derivative to rewrite this term. If you recall f of a comma xi, is nothing but f of xi minus f of a divided by xi minus a. Therefore, this can be written as f dash of some eta, right? Just to mean value theorem. And that gives us this expression for the mathematical error involved in the rectangle rule. This is precisely what we want to prove also. Let us now see the midpoint rule Midpoint rule is more or less the same as the rectangle rule. That is, you have to take n is equal to 0. And now the choice of the node x0 is different. Instead of choosing x0 equal to a, which leads to the rectangle rule, now we will choose x0 is equal to a plus b by 2, the midpoint of the interval a comma b. And that leads to an important rule called midpoint rule. The formula for the midpoint rule is b minus a into f of a plus b by 2. Just substituting x0 here, you get this formula. And we use the notation im of f to denote this formula. Remember, in the case of rectangle rule, we use the notation i r of f. So r stands for rectangle rule and that is given by b minus a into f of x naught and remember for rectangle rule we take x naught to be a and therefore that is the formula for the rectangle rule and this is the notation. Now I leave it to you to see what is the geometrical interpretation of the midpoint rule, just like what we did in the case of rectangle rule, you can give the geometrical interpretation for midpoint rule also. And I also I leave it to you to derive the formula for the mathematical error involved in the midpoint rule. In the last chapter, while discussing the polynomial interpolation for a function, we have seen that there are two ways that we can improve the approximation. One is by increasing the degree of the interpolating polynomial. And another way is to go for a piecewise polynomial interpolation. Now, in this chapter, we have seen that by replacing the given integrand by its polynomial interpolation, we can obtain different quadrature formulas. Now, the natural question is, instead of replacing the integrand by its interpolating polynomial, can we replace the integrand by its piecewise polynomial interpolation and get a quadrature formula? The answer is yes, and such quadrature formulas are called composite formulas or composite rules. Let us see how to derive the composite rectangle rule. The idea is to break the interval a, b into smaller subintervals and apply the rectangle rule on each subinterval. Let us see graphically how the composite quadrature rules can 
be used to improve the approximation when compared to the ordinary quadrature rules. Assume that we are interested in integrating a function f of x whose graph is given by this over the interval a to b. If we just go for the rectangle rule, then the approximate value of the integral a to b f of x dx is given by the area of this rectangle. Whereas if we go for the piecewise rectangle rule, we just subdivide this interval into say some n number of pieces, say x0, x1, x2, and so on. For instance, let us go up to x7 and thereby, if you restrict your rectangle rule first to the interval a x0 to x1, then we'll obtain the area of this rectangle. Similarly, you apply the rectangle rule in the interval x1 to x2, thereby, you will have the rectangle, this and so on. Thereby you are covering this area, which is obviously a better approximation than the rectangle rule applied to the full interval A to B, right? So that's the basic idea of the composite rules. We can hope to get a better approximation to our integral with the help of composite rule than applying the same rule on the entire interval. We will now derive a general formula for the composite rectangle rule. Let us subdivide the interval AB into n equal subintervals of length h is equal to b minus a by n. Note that we are assuming that the length of the subintervals are equal. This is just for the sake of simplicity. But once we assume that, we will go for equally spaced subintervals, then you can write xj as a plus j into h, where j equal to 0, 1 up to n. Remember, we are interested in evaluating the integral a to b f of x dx. Now we will write it as integral x0 to xn f of x dx, because we have taken x0 is equal to a plus 0 into h, therefore a, and xn, you can just see the way h is defined, we will have xn is equal to b, right? That is why I just wrote like this. Now what you do is you simply apply a very well-known property of the integral to write integral x0 to xn f of x dx as sigma j equal to 0 to n minus 1 integral xj to xj plus 1 f of x dx. Once we have this, you can now apply the rectangle rule for each of these integrals in the subinterval xj to xj plus 1. That is, you take integral xj to xj plus 1 f of x dx and approximate it by the rectangle rule thereby you will have b minus a, that is xj plus 1 minus xj, which is h times f of a, right? Here a is xj, and that is how you have this formula. So replace each of this term by h times f of xj, where j varies from 0 to n minus 1, and thereby we will have the formula like this, where each term is the approximation of the corresponding integral. And this is called the composite rectangle rule. 